everyone. It's great to have you join us. I know we're heading into the holidays, at least in the US. And I'm Amal Andrao, and I'm joined by Anders Khaki, who is a professor here at the school, and also direct the Advanced Architecture Design Program, as well as uh, Max St. Pierre, who is an MRC in the uh, third year MRC program. We have Tola Oniyangi, uh, who has joined us and is a dual degree MRC uh, MSUP, that's urban planning. Dylan Denton, um, MSAAD, and Anam Ahmed, also an AAD student. Um, thank you all for your questions. We've kind of combined them to try to answer as many uh, of them as possible and give you a sort of overview um, of the school. Uh, we're excited to uh, have you apply and think about uh, what we do here at GSAP. So the first question, and more broadly, I think, uh, as a kind of uh, concern is, you know, what distinguishes GSAP uh, from other schools? You know, how, how is our approach to teaching um, architecture, planning, preservation, you know, different? And there's a number of things that um, I like to say about the school in that uh, I think we are very much engaged in the kind of sense of continuity of the disciplines of the built environment, but also change. I think the school has historically really led the transformation of disciplines that has led the um, thinking about how, you know, architecture and planning can, uh, you know, engage more broadly uh, with the world. And the sense of engagement, what I call now scales of engagement, is very strong. It's possible that it's a result of GSAP and Colombia being so urban, being in New York, a global city. You know, we can't pretend like uh, we're in an isolated sort of school. We're kind of uh, deep into the structure of the city. We are kind of witnessing um, changes every day. And so I think that feedback loop is very, very strong here at the school. And we are about ideas. I like to say we're an urban condenser of ideas. We really think about how ideas can transform, again, what we do as architects, how we think, how we approach um, um, questions of, of architecture and of the design. And, of, uh, and, and I think we do that. I like to think, and here I'll invite everybody to join, that we are, there's a sense of openness, of kind of intellectual generosity. And, you know, People come here from all over the world with very diverse backgrounds, and um, and we as teachers are as much learning from students as students are learning from us. It's a real kind of conversation. Mm -hmm. Nobody knows what architecture is going to do or be in the future. We can't, uh, you know, we can't tell you this is what architecture is, but we can give you the tools to think through uh, what it can be for the future and how to articulate a position kind of for yourself, how to figure out how to engage as architects um, with the world. And I think this is very much something that um, we share across the programs and in particular across the MRC and the AAD program. And so when, when um, you ask, you know, uh, what is the school's ideology? I don't like to say that we don't have a, an ideology. We have really a sort of uh, a mission to open up things. Um, to ask questions, to enable um, students and faculty to ask questions and to take positions vis-a-vis -vis practice and how to shape practice for, for the future. And I think there's a kind of sense of optimism, I hope. <laughs> I, I know yeah. that today, um, you know, the world really needs uh, us to think differently about cities, about the environment, and I think as such, architects are really uh, at the crucial moment where they can define new directions for mm -hmm. Uh, for the planet, and I very much kind of like to support that um, at the school, and so also to support a sense of entrepreneurship, a sense mm -hmm. of critical engagement. There was one great question about, you know, why isn't there a thesis? Well, because every semester we ask you to have a thesis, and mm -hmm. and at the end of three years or three semesters, in the case of the AAD program, you make a portfolio, you put all your ideas together. And, and you present a position through representation, through writing, et cetera, vis-a-vis -vis the field. And so it's really that sense of encouragement that mm -hmm. I think we're, we're different at. Andres, what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> no, I totally agree. Like, I have the feeling that architecture is super important now. Like All the things that we're reading in the first page of newspapers, all the things that we care about are very architectural. So I think that uh, what I, the way I see GSAP now, 
it's a place, a cauldron, where all these capacities of architecture are being explored and reinvented. And it doesn't mean that everyone's doing the same. On the contrary, it's basically each one is looking at a different direction, but in all these directions, architecture is playing a key role. And we're talking of issues of climate change, borders, the, the way we turn technology accountable, the, the way we can deal with identities, the, the, the new forms of public space, so spaces of convening, all these kind of urgent issues are issues that can only be addressed through architecture. And we, we have an, a huge amount of people and institutions and uh, uh, laboratories that basically are mobilized through GSAP and expanding through the city of New York that are making it possible for people that come here to, to really find an amazing place where they can explore whatever they are uh, moved to. And I think that's very unique. I really enjoy that, and I, that's the reason I think that we all come here, basically, we, because there's an energy that comes out of this concentration of basically uh, the feeling that, that, that architecture is relevant, and that it's relevant as a practice that uh, mobilizes design and that uh, situates design in the places where things are happening. I would definitely agree with several of both your points, but I think um, in my two semesters here in the AAD program, there are several things that have been wildly different between the two semesters, but the uh, similarities are that both are multidisciplinary in that over the summer we were using the sciences and philosophy to look into the future of climate change, and then in this semester I've been working with Professor Mabel O. Wilson and using history and um, all of these you know different areas of study to sort of, uh, and both are speculating 100 years in the future. Both studios were situated uh, far from our present time, so I think the the multidisciplinary way to look forward has been like the the vast different from v vastly different from the way that I've uh, you know been taught to learn before yeah. coming to Columbia. And I think to kind of like tack on like I came to architecture from a French background, a studied French undergrad. So like showing up, I was like total blank slate. I had like no clue <laughs> where these three years were going to go, and it's been like a really kind of like wild meandering path through like multitudes of studios and scales, and like kind of how it's came together is like through these like three last kind of like hardcore research studios, mm -hmm. where to kind of like add your thing about thesis, like each studio, when you jump into it, it's like the first kind of like three to six or seven weeks is spent, is spent just like building argument and building thesis. And then the next like part of that is executing on it. So each studio has like a in super intense rigor in terms of like how you approach research and then taking on like your personal stake and then like finding stakeholders and output and kind of like making a project unique unto itself and kind of like having that architectural boundary blur past its envelope and kind of into the greater world that we operate in. So like thinking about you're thinking 50 years in the future, right now we're working on an island in southern Tunisia of Jerba and it's like, like taking on current uh, geopolitical um, like economic actors, kind of like yeah. tourism sitting in this place as well as climate change and um, border issues going on in Libya. So it's like all of these things are kind of overlapping in this current state and that's like right next to, we share a studio space. So it's yeah. like mm -hmm. all of these things are happening in this like really condensed area. Yeah, I think just to add to that, I think one thing that Amal mentioned was about the openness of GSAP. And I come from a hardcore architecture background like a BARC and an MARC. Um, but Columbia has been so different for me especially. And I really think <coughs> this sense of community that exists within the school and the collaborative nature is excellent because you could be taking an elective, someone could come for your review and they would still remember your project and still be giving you input. And I think that's so important because of the questions we're asking and the kind of you know, projects we're developing here. And also the, uh, the notion of studio, this, the research is really, really advanced, but also how it's situated in reality, right. which I find very important because it kind of, you know, it places our responsibility as architects in the world. And I think for me, that's why AD has been so great so far because being like a young architect, it's kind of helping me shape the kind of architect I also want to be, so it's been great. The only thing I'm going to add <laughs> is um, I think the diversity of different types of professors and their opinions um, yeah. as also seen in the different types of electives that we can take is really important mm -hmm. and has been really influential in helping me and I think a lot of other people figure out where it is in architecture in the future that they want to situate themselves. So there's never, you're never going to get two professors that are teaching the exact same thing in the exact same way. Mm -hmm. You're always going to have choices and options. And 
but it's, it's like even, even kind of like through all those different choices and options, like I felt like over the last however many studios, I guess we're up to five now, yeah. they might have each been like kind of radically different from the one before it, but they've all been complementary, kind of leading up yeah. to this, this larger piece. Yeah. And so, yeah, it's like you've kind of explored different ideas and kind of different architectural approaches and even like different representational approaches in some studios, like really going up different directions. But they've never felt disjointed, and it's always been like been like it's been pushing towards this like greater architectural body of knowledge, mm -hmm. and it's like it's just been like really amazing coming with nothing, and like after three years, like I feel. <laughs> well, it, it's great to hear you say that. Um, I would say next time I just should not show up, and then let. <laughs> <laughs> but but I'm I'm very encouraged. It's always great because I feel like it's a moment also where we get feedback. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah. even though of course we get feedback all the time. But but it, but it's true. If you think about the structure, and you know, if I think about the MRC as a kind of three-year structure and right. the AAD as a, as a three-semester structure, there's quite you know. Um, in the MRC program, really, the at least in, in the kind of studio, um, there's really the I would say the f the first three semesters we say are architecture in the city, and they yeah. sort of scale up. They scale from uh, Anna Pujaner's looking at you know Broadway and understanding you know that very well known New York street in a, in a kind of new way, and and although it's kind of a smaller scale of intervention, it really already looks at sociopolitical impacts and the history and typology, and you know brings all these things to and traces the kind of Broadway, and then. Um, in, in the second semester, you know, it's your first building, it's usually an institutional building, and you start to integrate, uh, you know, um, form and, and program and structure, and, and then, you know, housing in the third semester really is architecture and the city. Mm -hmm. um, and, the, you know, the school has a very long legacy in looking at housing. We just launched a housing lab um, last year. Uh, it, you know, housing is such an urgent question and and today at the school we're really bringing design intelligence but also connecting with planning and policy and to look at this kind of in aggregation uh, this question of, of, of housing as both a, a design and a yeah. formal problem but also a, a policy question and a, um, an environmental uh, sort of question as well and then in the the last three semesters we kind of really emphasize um, architecture and environment, obviously things are not so structured, yeah. but here you're thinking about um, the scales of environment, you're looking at kind of systems in the fourth semester, you're looking at rural conditions, and then um, uh, in the last um, two semesters, um, there is a kind of the, the notion of the argument really yeah. builds up, um, and there's a lot of kind of travel in the last two semesters to not just to travel, but to look at global conditions and right. think about them. Mm -hmm. Um, in relation to to practice um, to practice today and and you know if, you know if that's the kind of stu studio sequence every sequence builds in a similar way you know history theory is very engaged in um, in global issues as well and sort of what, what we call decentering the kind of European hegemony on on architectural history and and diversifying that um, you know quite a bit and visualization and technology, we almost think about them as together. There's a very strong sense of representation here at the school. Drawing is what we do critically yeah, yeah. as architects. And, um, but at the same time, that skill and that set, you know, that form of knowledge is intersecting now with technology. And so these two things are really, and building science and et cetera. So the, the, I, I, what I like to hear is that, I mean, the program is extremely structured, but at the same time, there's a lot of freedom within it to, yeah. to define yeah. a kind Absolutely. of position. Yeah. Um, so. mm -hmm. And AAD builds also, as you, as you mm -hmm. mentioned, Dylan, um, from the kind of you know, extremely critical, um, and, and also, and I'm extremely creative, very much architectural, but at yep. the same time, very much engaged <laughs> in the kind of urgent mm -hmm. um, questions of, of our time, I think. Um, yeah, I think yeah. the AAD, uh, Basically, it's three semesters that feel like three years, actually. <laughs> it's very fast, very intense. The summer is, is a moment that everyone arrives. The, we have people from 25 different countries coming here, and basically each one has with, comes with a very different trajectory. And what, I, what, what I really like about the summer, and maybe you, you can tell me what was your experience, is that it's super intense. Like Basically, we uh, bring all these people, or every, all these people come, and there's an effort to make sure that uh, every single kind of layer of reality that is becoming critical to architecture and where architecture is gaining a huge voice is explored. 
Right. And then also we uh, have the, the kind of, we, we, the, we make a great effort to mobilize all the kind of resources of the school so everyone gets to know what are the experiences in terms of representation, technology, visualization that have been developed in the school and what is the way that we can reconstruct our, together our relationship with the field. And we explore more than 200 projects in detail in this course that we call Transcolarities. And then the second and the third semester, the AD students are ready to mix with the rest of the school and that's a very intense moment in which basically you have to choose between 20 <laughs> uh, studios. And it's, it's a moment that basically you, you feel the muscle of the school, that is a school that has this long trajectory of innovation and reinvention <coughs> and criticality. I wanted to pick up uh, on uh, Dylan what you mentioned, but also Tola, you're a dual, and dual student. I think the notion of interdisciplinarity and, and transdisciplinarity yeah. is very strong here. Um, at the school, we have dual studios, even yeah. in the AMARC and AAD mm -hmm. um, programs. We have dual um, um, studios between architecture and planning, between architecture and preservation, uh, mm -hmm. between real estate and architecture. We have um, cross-disciplinary seminars uh, Friday morning, which kind of bring um, all the students uh, across the programs together. Um, we have summer workshops that, that's been going on for five years they are kind of outside of the curricula, and so we're able to um, provide three weeks and, and, and where you know, students come together. Um, we, this past semester, have uh, joined forces with the Buell Center, uh, which is also part mm -hmm. of the school, to, uh, um, and, and, and led by Reinhold Martin, to kind of bring a number of courses together around the question of public works for a Green New Deal. So that was another way to kind of be more um, cross-disciplinary. So I wanted to hear more about your experience kind of interacting um, or feeling like, you know, you were yeah. getting architecture yeah. but also architecture in relation to other fields. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I guess like to kind of tack on to both, to kind of like footnote those, is like there's this moment when you first kind of come into GSAP and everyone kind of arrives and there's like this big like first few months of like this like kind of cross-learning because everyone is coming from different backgrounds and from different kind of like uh, mm -hmm. I guess they have backgrounds and is like teaching each other new skills. And you have this moment again, and it's like this incredible like moment of energy in your third year when all the AADs and all the MRCs kind of come together in these big studios, and there's this massive push where everyone is like both teaching each other things and then everyone's like learning new skills, new methodologies, and new ways to like look at like the world around us. That's like a really exciting moment in your like GSAP time is when there's this big like cross. Um, and then I guess like summer studios, uh, I got to go on one this summer workshop this summer. And it was <laughs> which one? Did you I was in uh, Lebanon with Ziad. Oh great! That was amazing. It was three weeks in Beirut, and we did a a big exhibition at a gallery there. Mm -hmm. And it was tons of research, super fun, incredibly intense, mm -hmm. hot, but uh, like wouldn't change it for anything. But you did a dual degree. Yeah. Um, so from a dual degree perspective. Um, I think GSAP does a really good job at help giving you the opportunity to integrate different um, interests. And there's a wide range of classes from both the architecture side from the other side, but also the studios that I was talking about. I've taken two of those, two of the joint urban planning and architecture course um, studios. Uh, and I think like it's a real strength to be able to integrate both those things and have students from both those programs, professors from both those programs, and still come out with um, projects that are very intentional and very much rely on expertise from both those sides together. Um, did, you do the, did you do the Puerto Rico one? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I yeah. I did Rico. the I did the Puerto Rico studio, which um, it was in the aftermath of Hurricane Maria. Mm -hmm. So we went to. Puerto Rico, and we all had different projects that reacted to the context and to obviously the ecological issues as well in various different ways. Um, but there's also so many other electives as well, which I would say, especially um, some of the ones that are for the whole school, like data visualization courses, right. um, generative design, there are a whole bunch of other different types of classes that data people from data in the city, yeah. people from many different programs in GSAP take all those classes, interact with each other, and all come out with different skills and expertise from that. 
Totally. And I, I think this moment that you're talking about of everyone sort of coming together, like, is, it's like a really great moment when, you know, I got here and I think as a native New Yorker, I'm by far in the minority with the AAD program. Which yeah. People <laughs> from all around the world, um, for sure. And then, and then also when you come together with the MR students, for example, my roommate is an MR who's been working for years as a product designer and yeah. is really talented in something that I know very little about. And, and so, and he's a first year and, and he can teach me so much, but, yeah. um, and that's, so that part's, I think, really great. And I think I think that that multidisciplinarity comes again through the electives that we take. Um, so, for example, in one class, I'm uh, I'm learning how to I'm learning JavaScript and coding an app uh, that'll help intervene uh, in space and the way we use our phones. And then another class, I'm working in the shop by hand, making light fixtures by pouring concrete. And so the the range is like on on both ends of the spectrum, and and both incredibly enjoyable. I find, and I'm learning a lot at the same time. Yeah, I mean, I think, just thinking about the summer, it was another timeline. It was very, the two most intense months of my life, I can safely <laughs> say. But it was, an, it was a really good way to catch up, I think, because once we came into fall and we merged with the MRX, we knew that the pace of the school was kind of a different pace altogether, and we had to, like, keep up. But it's been great, I think, also, like, building up on what Dylan is saying, but the interdisciplinary thing that, I mean, the courses are amazing that are offered and even now I was struggling with my registration <laughs> but I think like for instance like I'm taking a making class and that's also really interesting because you know of course it's a part of architecture but um, it's also you're not just in the digital world but you're also in the real world and you're working with your hands because I think you know so it, what I guess what I'm saying is that it really allows you to shape and test the things that you want to test. And another thing about the interdisciplinary thing was that in the summer we had uh, the, the transcolarity scores and also the argument scores. And while right. the, the program is very structured, it's still so cohesive. I mean, it's, it's open but structured, but it's so cohesive that I feel like everything informs the other. And we had like artists, um, designers come in for the argument series. And it was amazing how their work can actually help you inform something you might be doing in studio or even like your theory classes. So it's quite well integrated, which is awesome. Um, two, two things that I'm sort of um, hearing you say that I, I want to kind of pick up on. Uh, the first is uh, the fact that the, although the curriculums are structured, there's a sense of openness and the fact that we adapt and we are trying to respond to what is happening out in the world. And that there's a kind of feedback loop yeah. thing between the students and the faculty, mm -hmm. between what's happening in the world and the curriculum, right? That it's where it's live. You're getting foundations, but it's also live. Do you do you get that sense that you're you're kind of thinking through the issues through your work? Yeah, and the courses like change so rapidly. It's like every semester almost like the course list gets like updated and like new teachers come on. So the course list and like the registration in general kind of adapts to both its context as well. So it's like we're constantly being fed like new information and new courses that might that just like help kind of add to your educational experience. So there's no static or like stale thing that, oh, I took that three, three years ago, or I took that last year. Yeah. It's always changing and always adapting. Um, so it makes, like you said, registration super tough. Yeah. <laughs> also for the faculty, yeah. I have to tell you, yeah. it's very competitive. Because you're constantly. Like, you know, oh, I have two students this semester. Oh, not me, but that, actually, it did happen to me the first time I taught. Um, but because it's very competitive. It's I mean, super it's competitive. <laughs> And so you want all these courses, and they're constantly changing. So you're like reading these handbooks, and like like you don't even know what to take. So it, like it be, it's it's a good problem to have, but yeah. it's a problem. It's true. <laughs> yeah, I'm also going to add on that um, something this semester was the Green New Deal framework for. I'm not sure if it's for the whole school or if it's just for MARC 3 and AD, but... Um, and UD, I think. UD, yeah. and, UD. And, and planning also. Oh, so the whole school. Yeah. 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 It's great. And we're, and we're going to build on that, so yeah. stay tuned. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that's just really interesting and powerful, kind of the fact that things are happening in the real world, in the outside world, and GSAP is responding to that. So. Um, things like that when you're dealing with the curriculum. And also there are the Buell Center, there are many other um, facets of the school that really respond to what's happening. Absolutely, I mean, my, my studio this semester is, is based off of history and sociology, mm -hmm. but, but all the time we're bringing in, um, you know, the New York Times front page uh, on a regular basis. So I think that, you know, no, no matter what, uh, it's, it's always, mm -hmm you know, what happens on a day-to-day -day basis is changing the way that the professors they're thinking, that the students are trying to think, 
And I think that that's absolutely part of what makes everyone so excited is that we feel like we're a part of something that's larger than just what's happening in academia, but we're working on things that are gonna be impacting the real world uh, now and when we graduate and, and move forward. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm in Andres' studio actually, and we're doing, we're also part of the Green New Deal, like the five studios. and. I think in that sense, it's also been really great because the idea of uh, working between between disciplines, um, like we've been talking to experts who are experts on migration because we're focusing more on what's happening with the climate, how it's affecting people globally, and how architecture also plays such a vital role in something like that. So it got, like what you realize is you can't think about it in a box at all, and you really have to kind of engage people who are experts, let them help you, and sort of make like bolster your project really. Mm -hmm. So yes. And so the second facet of this that I wanted to bring up was studio culture and collaboration. And just because, you know, I want to just get a sense of, um, uh, uh, you know, I mean, it doesn't, you don't sound intimidated <laughs> by, the, <laughs> the, by the opportunities. And, you know, I wanted to kind of hear a little bit about how it's going in studio. And Okay, I'll go. <laughs> I mean, I, I think it's been, a, it's so we do a lot of collaborative work. Uh, in the first semester we had teamwork, and now again we do. And it's really amazing because you learn so much from people coming from different cultures. Like, I mean, I'm from a different part of the world, but you also kind of find like your realities align while you're picking a similar studio. So you're kind of on the same like ideological, I think, framework. Um, but also, uh, working with the MRCs has been really great. We only have one MRC in our studio because, you know, <laughs> Andres is popular in AD. Because Andres is a star. <laughs> <laughs> but that said, I think right. even just from him, and also because of the way we are located and literally in the studio, we really help each other out a lot, like just navigating the systems and also like the projects and even the courses. So it's, it's very intense, but I think the idea of collaboration is challenging but it's also the reality so and it's also i think very, it really uh, secures the work yeah i mean i think if if you're coming to gsap you're gonna have to be prepared to spend a lot of time in the studio no matter what um but that part is what's fun and exciting and i think the fact that everyone's looking to collaborate with each other and share ideas it it doesn't come from a place of like, oh, I, I have to stay here to do work to impress the professor. It's not like a coming from a place of peer, fear. It's coming from a place of all these amazing, really smart people are around you, and you want to keep working with them. You want to keep showing your ideas. And I think um, I, I, I've totally been inspired um, by my peers and my professors to just like really want to spend my, my evenings in the studio and, and continue working to, to get better. I just want to jump in, please. I just think the energy in studio is so contagious, and which is yeah. what Dylan, I think, is saying, <laughs> that you just, you actually aren't forced to stay there, you kind of enjoy staying there, which is also really nice. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I'm going to agree with everything they just said. Um, we actually, well, me and Max, and. The MRCs, we have three semesters where we have to work in groups for a housing yeah. studio and for two tech classes. Um, and I think like all of that collaboration was so helpful, especially for someone like me who came straight from undergrad and has never, like, apart from an internship, worked in the real world where you have to work with people. Um, those were really fun. Um, but also, I will say that for studio, it's always, it's not a culture of like, everyone's competitive and mm -hmm. no, if you ask someone like, oh hey, how do you like do this one cool rendering thing, they'll be like, no, no, everyone's there to help each other and it's always like everyone's pushing into each other to do better. Yeah, I think that's like a very healthy competition. Like everyone is obviously striving to do their best work, but never at the cost of someone else's and never at the cost of like helping someone else. So I know personally, like I owe so much of my architectural education to like. I mean, we were in a group together, and you taught like you taught me uh, GIS. Like you know, it's, no, literally, it's like I would have never learned. And so it's like I owe so many of these skills to like. Like you end up in this group, and people bring certain skills, people bring other skills, and like you can't. There's no there's no option. You have to learn it, and so like you have to lean on your friends, and your friends are like the people sitting next to you. So you end up like creating this like really intense kind of like melting pot of education in these studios, and they do get hot. <laughs> um, and so it just it becomes like a very intense but like very educational and like an amazing place of exchange because everyone is like in it together and there's like a very strong sense of community and a very strong sense of like togetherness in the studios which I think is like 
why you choose to stay. Because when I when I, when I try to work at home, I get nothing done. <laughs> That's um, true. Because like there's like a there's a the critical mass to it, and so it's like it's a very special place. It's also important that I, in that you know often we get the question of you know what to do if you don't have an architecture background and if you have one, etc. And and. I, We've always found that yeah. literally after the first year, you can't make the difference between yeah. who came in with an architecture background and who didn't. And that's part of that exchange yeah, and absolutely. that learning from one another. And we really, I mean, I can tell you that for admissions, we, I mean, I read all the applications. Andres yeah. reads the applications for AAD. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we're looking for anyone who has this, an interesting background or, you know, what you write, how you present yourself, it doesn't, doesn't matter, you know, of course, if you have a great portfolio, that's great, but it, it's really who you are and, and, and how you can contribute with what you've learned to architecture. Mm -hmm. um, and, I mean, it's true, you can't tell the difference after, you know, mm -hmm. the first and second semester. Did you have that experience? I mean, the first year is like, I mean, just to be honest, like, it's tough, because you show up and, like, there is an expectation that you know a lot of programs, um, but you learn them like really, really fast, and that's a lot of it. It's like like taking like talking to your neighbor who's sitting next to you, um, and saying like, "How do I do this thing in X?" And that person like almost always will stop and show you. And so I'd say like within two or three months, you're like program fluency, and then it's just like about learning like representational skills and like simple like architectural like like uh, not, I don't want to say standards, but like uh, conventions. Um, and after the first year, yeah, you kind of like you kind of fade into the mass. But then one thing that does show for like anyone who's like applying for, with a non-architectural background is that uh, your humanities background, whatever it may be, yeah. is very valued. And like yeah. you come with different readings, you come able to usually public speak um, and do other things that a lot of your architectural colleagues might have a harder time doing. So you bring a lot to the table. Um, and I found that I was like, it was never a one-way exchange when I was helping people and people were helping me. And so it was always like very valuable. Are any of you TAing for the yeah, course? Yeah, yeah, me too. But um, I'm not TAing for course, and I'm not TAing for a studio course. It's right. a different position. I'm TA for the Center for Spatial Research, right. so I do mm -hmm. mostly. Um, research work, and I also TA the data visualization course, but um, just students ask me questions with JavaScript, which is what the class taught in, and um, I help them with that, so. I'm asking because I think we also, as a school, offer quite a lot of <coughs> TA ships, yeah. and for us, it's not just a, um, uh, a kind of financial aid, form of financial aid, but it's also, again, this notion that um, teaching, learning, etc., is a kind of feedback loop, and uh, um, I always enjoy both the, you know, the marks end up a lot of them end up TAing, but um, the ADs I always feel like never leave. It's like you know, <laughs> I graduate them in the spring, and then I, they show up in the summer as TA for the next class, yeah. right? I mean. So apply now, but actually, there's an open call now. For there's an AAD open call. Students to um, TA over the summer. It's so. just a, <laughs> well, yeah. I'll I'll be applying. So <laughs> that's right. I'll yeah. See you in 2020. Exactly. <laughs> um, it's just a note to say that this is also yeah. part of the culture of the school that you yeah. you uh, many of the students tend to either come back or um, or TA while they're here, yeah. and and that creates a kind of really yeah. nice also community and mm -hmm. uh, in terms of. Um, um, learning through teaching in a way, or yeah. through assisting uh, um, in teaching. Um, I wanted to talk about New York. I mean, we talk about global and the fact that we're very diverse, and and you're you're a New Yorker, and mm -hmm. um, you know how you know the fact that the school, uh, as much as we're very connected to to the world, you know how is the city so important to yeah. to the school, and how is the school as a cultural institution? I'm thinking about you know events and the number of yeah. people who come through and the fact that um, we have uh, faculty that is you know practicing out in the city yeah. and it's very easy to bring them on reviews and so that also is a kind of very strong community and wanted to hear um, your thoughts about that in terms of your experience of the city um, you know as as being a kind of yeah. real participant in the school and vice versa. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean I think. 
I, I can't imagine a different place to study architecture than New York. I mean, just in the way that your access to faculty and then later access to employment. Like I know I have some friends who went to other schools upstate and when it came time for summer internships or summer jobs, they had a really hard time just by like, housing because they had to get a house in New York as well as pay their summer rents wherever they were. And so just kind of having this as your home base is like A, a great thing. Yeah. And then B, again, like your access to museums, uh, exhibitions, like music, the other faculty is like bar none. And then kind of like going back into the core sequence like we spoke about earlier, the first kind of three semesters where you operate on New York and it, it becomes your like, architectural laboratory um, is amazing just because it's A, an incredible way if you're not from New York to kind of experience and learn the city. And then B, it's like there's no like place more maybe architecturally interesting to like to learn. And so New York has been, for me, like, fantastic. And I was a little nervous to move here. I'm from California. It's like very far away. <laughs> um, but it's been great. Uh, uh, yes, all that. Um, plus, I think the fact that um, we're able to have so many interesting professors come in. Um, a lot of people who teach at GSAP also work, which I think is really nice just to be able to have access to those people. Um, people come for mid-reviews as well as the final reviews and just the fact of being able to go to different conferences both at GSAP and at other places, yeah. lectures, um, happy hours for different types of groups, just there's just so much you can do here. Yeah, I, I can only echo your point in that, um, I mean, this this was one of the main reasons I chose GSEP overall was, um, and it has not let me down in that um, my professors, um, just socially, you know, happy hours, and I'm, I'm meeting architects that are practicing at the highest level and, and establishing a face-to-face -face connection with them, which I think is critical uh, in moving forward. But beyond that, also what the educational opportunities of New York allow you to do are really awesome. So whether it's going with my professor to closed door meetings at MoMA or um, visiting MoMA PS1 or going to the Whitney Biennial, um, these are just opportunities that uh, I, you know, I, I studied in a small city in New Orleans and, and it, it, I didn't have the same opportunities while I was an undergraduate to do what I'm doing this year. And, and yeah, so both meeting people and attending the really important like institutional uh, events in New York. Yeah, I mean, absolutely, I agree with all of this. I think I did my MR in New York also, and again, came back two years later to New York, and it's, you just, it's, a, it's the city is, has a different energy, and I think it gives you so much opportunity in terms of the people, the art, the resources, and not just in terms of, I mean, I've come to Columbia from Parsons a few times to like look at books, so even the architectural like resource in the city in terms of the knowledge, the people, like, there, there's a lot that it has to offer, and I think it really encourages you to like test your ideas also, uh, which is kind of great because a lot of things are also happening in New York. Like mm -hmm. you'll have some of the biggest people, or even not the big, like the smallest people, <laughs> like testing their their work. Uh, like the MoMA PS1 you mentioned, I think, you know, and from all over, like some parts of the world and all over the country. So it's kind of great that you get to see it all within one city. And I think too, like to kind of add on, like you also have access to like the international stage in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. Like uh, I, with my partner who's now in your studio, Frank, last mm -hmm. semester, were able to participate in the Sol Biennale with one of our, yeah. our professors. Um, some other classmates were able to participate in the Venice Biennale, just because a lot of the architects that are kind of like going to these different places around the world are located here. So you have access to this, like not only your New York stage, but then your international stage, yeah. which mm -hmm. then as a student is like an amazing place to be able to get access to. Yeah, I like to think that we're, you know, I mean, especially if I look at, um, you know, the kind of core sequence, you know, from Broadway to Harlem, you know, housing is so embedded and working with the community right. here in Harlem and then upstate New York, <coughs> in New York with advanced four and then the kind of travel. There's also the yeah. sense of the kind of very local and right. very global, yeah. which carries from studio work to the history theory curriculum to yeah how we think about data and cities and how that's shaping um, the world, um, the built environment. And so these, these kind of ties, I think, are really important. And on a very pragmatic level, we have a career service uh, center, which also supports alumni when they graduate. And I know you're not yet thinking about that, but, um, <laughs> no. but you know, it's been increasingly successful. Uh, you know, I know when I'm looking to hire, I check with Francesca, and she sends me great students. And so it, it's both an informal network of colleagues and 
friends and faculty you TA for, you get to meet, etc., mm -hmm. or you're engaged uh, working with them on some of their research project, the Annale, etc. We have mm -hmm. a number of centers, the Center for uh, Spatial Research that um, you're working for, but there's also the Center for um, Resilient Cities and Landscapes, which is very tied to the urban design program, but you can also apply to help there. There's the housing lab now, etc. And so there's a really kind of a tie between um, pedagogy, practice, research, and a kind of conversation uh, between all of these parts. So we have just a little few minutes left. Um, I um, uh, I would say maybe just one question to, to, I turn it to you. You know, if there was um, one question you would have liked to ask before applying, or if, or, or you know, when when you came here, like what made you decide to come, or have you, so far, your experience has been, I hope, positive. You know, maybe one last words of wisdom to our um, excited, but I'm sure also anxious uh, mm -hmm. uh, listeners and applicants potentially. <laughs> Encouragement. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I'm. I chose GSAP because of the fact that I actually really wanted to do a dual degree and I felt like I had so many different interests and so many directions that I was being pulled in and I wanted to go to a school that had the options for me to try and figure out for myself like is this what I'm interested in and ha be able to try all these different opportunities. Um, that being said, I feel like one thing I wish that I had known applying um, for the dual degree and like just being here as a dual degree student was the fact that the school isn't going to do that work for you. You're going to have to like push yourself to take all those electives and connect with those professors that are doing work in these different areas and just being very, very proactive. Um, yeah, just being very proactive and really having a goal of like, I'm doing these degrees, but this is what I want to get from it, and this is how I'm going to get from point A to point B. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I guess, I don't, I don't know if I really have a question I would have asked, but um, I only, when I applied to graduate school, I only applied to cities I would live in, so it was kind of like New York was top of the list. Um, and when I got in, it was like, I didn't read the other letters, it was check, we're going. <laughs> um, and uh, it has not let me down. GSAP, like, I know it may seem like a daunting program, but there's like a lot, of, look, as compared to other MRCs, there's a lot of students in our years. Um, but it feels like just right. And the studio space may seem tight, but again, like, it feels perfect. Mm -hmm. um, and I wouldn't, like, trade it for any other program or any other city. It's been splendid. Yeah, I think uh, sort of. To your, I think if, if I could tell myself like one thing coming back in again, you know, I, I think going in, I was really nervous. I was very frightened. It's a, certainly a daunting program to enter into, and I think that I would just tell myself to, you know, um, get as involved as you can possibly be, and not just in studio, but also uh, you know, yeah. get a job in the workshop, or working for exhibitions, yeah, or working for, you know, the Center for Spatial Research, um, because. Uh, it's not that putting more on your plate is going to make it's going to make everything easier yeah, if you're if you're all in um, to the experience. Sure. And I think that's how how you would get the most out of this. Yeah, yeah that's good advice. I mean, I think for me, being that you know I've studied architecture a lot before, I really wanted a program which could kind of help me test my ideas and do it with the people like some of the best minds. And also, I wanted to come back to New York, so it was kind of a very ideal situation because I, you know, it just worked out really well that way. Great. Well, we're very happy to have you, and thank you for your time and your candid answers. This is not scripted. <laughs> uh, I didn't bribe anyone. Um, and uh, uh, it's just always a pleasure to hear everyone share their feelings and thoughts, and um, we really are here for our students, for our faculty, we, for architecture. We want it to matter in the best way and uh, to think about its future together. So, Andres, any last words of? Well, we're very excited to have new people come in, right. new <laughs> topics, new concerns, new discussions, and that's the energy that keeps everything alive. So. Exactly, and if you have more specific questions, you know, to direct them to the admissions office and otherwise apply, and I look forward to reading you on the other side of the holidays. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. <laughs>